This must be Jack. Oh, isn't it clever the way I figured that out? You know, I'm not on the dean's list for nothing. <laughs> I'm glad you came, Janet. It'll be nice to have a brain around here to talk to once in a while. You know, I mean, Janet and Chrissy are terrific, but they're not nearly as well informed as me. You mean, as I? Well, yes, you too. <laughs> Listen, why don't I take your carriage and put it... I mean, Selma Teacher 7, Mr. Berry here. This is lesson number 14 for the Computer Literacy course. And we'll be covering Google Slides, which is just like Microsoft's PowerPoint. And in fact, this is the second part of the Google Slides lessons. At any time in the video, please click on thumbs up or a like and share the video. Now, this is part two of using Google Slides and the second video in the special of the three companies presentation. So I'll be going over and actually doing the presentation on Three's company. Now if you did not see the very first presentation then you can actually go and click on the link above me and see that presentation because it is longer and it goes over different aspects than I'll be covering today. So the presentation on Three's company that I'll be showing you in this video does look different. So I do hope that you see both presentations. Now after presenting in this lesson, I'll be taking you step by step on what I did to actually create that presentation. So let's get started with that presentation. Three's Company, presented by your teacher, Daniel Berry. Today we're going to be looking at the story, the characters, the TV show, the episodes, student review, and the student poll. The story. The story revolves around three single roommates. Janet Wood, that was played by Joyce DeWitt, Chrissy Snow, that was played by Suzanne Summers, and Jack Tripper, who was played by John Ritter, who all platonically lived together in a Santa Monica, California apartment complex owned by Stanley Roper, who was played by Norman Fell, and Helen Roper, who was played by Audrey Lindley. After Norman Fell and Audrey Lindley left the series in 1979 for their own sitcom, Don Knotts joined the cast as the roommate's new building manager, Ralph Furley. Following Summer's departure in late 1980, Jenny Lee Harrison joined the cast as Chrissy's first cousin, Cindy Snow, who was soon replaced by Priscilla Barnes as Terry Alden. The Story The show, A Farce, chronicles the escapades and hijacks of the trio's constant misunderstandings social lives, and financial struggles. The characters. We have Jack Tripper, Chrissy Snow, Janet Wood, Stanley Roper, and Helen Roper. The TV show. The show was set in a neighborhood within walking distance of the beach in Santa Monica, California, and was filmed primarily using three main sets the trio's apartment, their landlord's apartment, and a neighborhood pub called the Regal Beagle. In later seasons, more sets were used, frequently depicting the apartment of Jack's friend Larry, Angelino's restaurant, Jack's bistro, the hospital where Terry worked, and Janet's flower shop. The episodes. There were three pilots, and the last one had the actors that we have come to know and love on Three's Company. These pilots followed the British series very closely with a few minor changes. There were at least 172 episodes. Student Review by Charles Berry. So, my name's Charles Berry, and uh, I watched Three's Company all the time, and my favorite part had to be the physical comedy. Now, Physical comedy happened all the time. Jack Tripper getting hit by doors, he gets hit by women. He he really just does the physical comedy perfectly. But uh, if I had to choose my favorite favorite part, it would have to be when Jack Tripper has to cook in this one scene where he, he like he, there's four women in this apartment and he has to cook for four of them, all of them, simultaneously. And he he's like sweaty. He, he's running up and down. You could really see that physical humor that he portrayed before being implemented perfectly. That's why I love that scene. And what he was talking about was in that one episode where Jack ends up dating more than one girl at the exact same time. And there's one girl in, that he's placed in Larry's apartment, one in his apartment. And then of course he has to take care of 
his roommates <laughs> and but they're at Furley's apartment taking care of Furley so he was running up and down uh, getting meals for everyone and no one knew that he was doing that until they became rather suspicious we love it would you like to be Jack Tripper <laughs> and according to my class where I sent out that survey 95% said yes and 5% said no <laughs> Alrighty, now we have, are there any questions? So on this part here, remember you're doing this actually online and so that you would actually, it's very similar to like a Google meeting where people would actually see this and you would share the link to your presentation and everyone would be able to watch it and listen to you. And then if they have a question, they can actually chime in. And oh, okay, I see a question now. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Hezekiah. Why did Suzanne Summers leave from Three's Company? The reason why Suzanne Summers was fired from Three's Company was because, well, she had fired her original agent, and then her husband was the new agent, and they thought together, hey, they can ask for a big raise. Well, at the time, they were getting $35,000 per episode, but she wanted $150,000 per episode. And so her husband went to ABC and talked to the execs there and said, Hey, she's worth it. Give us 150000 or else. And they, they basically just thought it was a joke. They, they said, That's a huge uh, increase, like five times what everyone else would be getting. No way. So within the uh, month there, Suzanne Summers stopped going to rehearsals, stopped going to the tapings and other parts of the show there. And when one of the main characters is not in the show, the network loses a lot of money. And so they began writing her out of the script rather quickly and replacing her with other people there. So actually Don Knotts was actually saying some of her lines for a short time. And they just wanted to fire her, but in the contract it said that she has to be in there somewhere, right? So basically she would get these little 30 second parts at the very end of the episode where she'd be on the phone saying, hey, how's everyone? And then Janet would talk to her and say a few lines and then that was it. Um, usually it was less than five lines for those episodes. And she was soon replaced there by someone else. And Suzanne Summers' career really didn't take off like they thought it would after that, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, that's the tragic story of why Susan Summers was fired from Three's Company. So when we go here, we can look at the characters. And if I click there, there's Chrissy Snow there. There's Janet Wood, Stanley, and Helen. And if I click up here, it'll take me back to any other questions. Hey, Mr. Barry, what was your favorite episode? Oh, going back to the episodes, well, my favorite episode is when Jack actually gets his own bistro called Jack's Bistro. And all of his friends go into uh, the bistro or to the restaurant and they look at it and it's in shambles. I mean, it's just, it's in a mess. And each of them pitches in to help him clean up and basically make that, that restaurant look brand new. And I thought that was really a, uh, a heart-touching episode there where all the friends come together to help Jack. So our last slide there and they say goodbye. Alright, thank you very much for watching the short presentation. Now I'm going to take you and actually show you how I created the presentation step by step. Now to begin the creation of your presentation, let's go to a new tab within your browser and once you're there at Google, go ahead and click on the Google Apps and let's go to the Google Drive. From within the Google Drive, once it loads, you'll need to click on the New button and then click on Google Slides. And a new blank presentation will load as you see here. Now at any part of the lesson, you can actually hit the space bar to pause the video. That way you can always catch up on any of the steps. So here we see the blank presentation. Now not all of us are great designers and not all of us can make great themes. 
But one of the nice things that Google offers are these themes that we see here on the sidebar. And if I scroll down, you can see many wonderful designs and nice themes that were all created for you. Notice down here you can actually import a theme. And that would be if you had created a theme in the past or found one on the internet. Now you can create your own custom theme. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this theme called Focus. And I'll click it. So now you notice that all of the fonts, the colors, and the backgrounds have been changed to this focused theme. So now I want to give it a title, so I'm going to click up here in the upper left hand corner where it says Untitled Presentation, and we'll call this one Three's Company. One of the wonderful things about using Google Office, that is Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, is that all of your documents, your sheets, your presentations, they're all saved within your Google Drive. And that is unlimited space there for these types of things. Now if you place other types of stuff there, they do count against your uh, storage. But uh, it's unlimited storage for your Google Slides, your Google Docs, and your Google Sheets. And all of these files are automatically saved within your Google Drive the instant you make a change. So that's really wonderful because you'll never lose your work again. In case your computer goes down, don't worry. Just log into your Google Drive on another computer. And there's your presentation. And that's what it means when it says all changes saved in your drive. Another thing that you may notice if you look down here, it says speaker notes. So let's type in some speaker notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring up one of my tools. And this is voice type speaker notes. So I'm going to click right here on the microphone. Three's company ran from 1977 to 1984. And when you're presenting your presentation, you actually will see the speaker notes on a separate screen. So if the audience doesn't see these notes, they will only see the main presentation. Now that we have our theme, I don't need this sidebar any longer, so I'm going to click on this little X and close off the theme sidebar. Now we can begin working on our presentation. So first off, we need to click here to add a title. So Three's Company. I'm going to customize this to make things stand out a little bit better. We can do that by changing what's called the master template. So we click on slide and then down to edit master. And you'll see this come up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the font that's being used on the master title style here. So I click it. Then I'm going to go up here to the font. And then right here at the top, you notice it says More Fonts. I'm going to click on More Fonts. Now to find the font that we want, I'm going to click up here in the box and type in B-E-R for Brookshire. And it comes up here to Brookshire Swash. So I'm going to click on that one there and then click on OK. Now you notice that the font style changes here. And you also will notice the word Berkshire up here in the font selection tool. Now I'll just let you know there are literally thousands of different fonts that you can choose from both here and if you want to find more just click on more fonts and if you take out the burr there you can actually see that there are thousands upon thousands of fonts that you can choose from. So if you're not really happy with one we'll just keep on looking and then select a different one. And the next thing that we're going to do here is click on B for bold. And you notice that the font here has now become bold. Now I'm going to reposition my main title. So I'm going to drag it to where I want it to be. And you'll, you may notice here as you're dragging it to the edges, you'll see these red lines appear. That way you can line up everything exactly the way that you want. And so these red lines come up to let you know that you're lining up to an edge. As soon as you get exactly where you want it to be, just let go of the mouse clicker. And it pops into place. And I'm going to drag this one out. Again, you notice that you have those red lines that appear. So I want the title to be down here. Then I'm going to click on the subtitle here. And I'm going to drag that one all the way up to the top.
I'm going to drag this line over. Now I'm going to click down here and I want to change my font size from 38 to size 60. So I just click on 60 and it will change it there for me. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this font here. So if I click right here where it says text color, click it and I'm going to choose black. Now once I'm happy with all the changes, I'm going to click on this X here and you'll exit the master slide. Now from here what I can do is, let's say that I want to make some changes to the title. I can just click on it and I want to make some minor changes here. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And what I can do is I can actually take this and then drag this down. So it tightens up everything down here. That way I have more space for the image that I'm going to be using. So up here where it says click to add subtitle, I'm going to click here. And I'm going to type in presented by Daniel Berry. And notice I can drag this up. That way I have more space for my image again. So let's say I don't like this white background down here. I can click it and then I can click on the fill tool right here. And I could choose a new color and I'm going to choose a light gray. Up here at the subtitle I'm going to click it here and I'm going to choose B for bow there. Make it pop out a little bit more. Yeah, it makes it easier to see. Now both of my text boxes here and the one down here can have different alignments. Now if I want both of them to be aligned to the center, since I have the first one already highlighted, if I hold down the shift and then click on the one down here, they both become highlighted at the same time. And any change that I do will affect both text boxes simultaneously. So now I'm going to click on alignment. And then right here where it says middle, I'm going to click that once. Now they're in the exact middle, just in case I was off a little bit on one. So now they're exactly in the middle. Now we have a number of elements already in our presentation. Next thing I want to do is insert an image. Now I don't want an image in this text box or in this text box. So I'm going to click here in this area right here. And therefore none of the boxes are highlighted. Now to insert an image, I'm going to click on Insert, Image, and then go across. And notice that if you already have an image on your computer, you can click on Upload from Computer. If you have one already in your Google Photos or within your Google Drive, you choose one of these. Or if you have it by the address, the web address, you have that. If you have a camera on your computer, you can take a picture there. This time I'm going to click on Search the Web and this sidebar window should open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here where it says search for images and I'm going to key in Three's Company. And then hit the enter key once. And notice that there are many images of Three's Company here. So I'm going to select this image here. So I'm going to click on it once. You'll notice that there's a blue check mark on it. And then I'm going to click on insert. and the image will be dropped into your presentation. So now I'm going to work with this image. So if I double click it, this allows me my cropping tools. These are the black lines that you see in the corners here. And I'm going to cut part of this off here. So I'm going to very carefully crop off the area that I don't need. I can click away from the image now and that cropped area should disappear. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it and place it right where I want it to go here. And once it's in the center you notice that there's a red line going straight down the center of the image. Let go and now the image should be centered with my text. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. There we 
go. And now you notice that it's covering up some of my text. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the image and then go down to order. And I'm going to click on send to back. And now the text appears in front of the image. Now if I want to add a line down here between the picture here and the title, all I have to do is click right here on the line tool and then go over to where I want the line to begin which is right here and then I'm going to drag it across and then let go and now I have a line separating the title and the photo. Now if I want that line to be larger, I can go right here where it says line weight, click it, and I choose maybe uh, the three here. And you notice now it's a little bit thicker line. So that line really breaks up the uh, picture from the logo here. So you can see we started our presentation with a really nice cover page. And it says Three's Company in this really nice text. It has a really good background picture that we all really like. And it says presented by Daniel Berry here for the subtitle. So far so good. Now let's say that I wanted to edit this image a little bit more. All I have to do is click it and you'll notice at the very top right here we have different options that appear. So I'm going to click on format options. And now under these format options we have where I can recolor it, adjustments there, even the drop shadow reflection. So if I wanted to do a uh, some adjustments here, I'll click on adjustments and I can change it here a little bit. Now once you're happy with the adjustments there, you can actually just click on the X to close this off. We're now ready for the second slide. So to insert the second slide, simply go and click on insert and go all the way down to new slide right here. Or you can use the shortcut control M. There we go. So I have this new slide here, but I don't like the layout. So notice that you have these tools up here and I'm going to click on layout. And I'm going to click on one column text. Now what I want to do is I want to insert an image on the right hand side here. So I'm going to click on Insert, Image, and Search the Web. And I'm going to click on the very first image. Notice it's got this blue check mark here, and I'm going to click on Insert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this image a little bit here. And once I've done that, I'm going to click on Format Options to change some of the things that are going on in this image here. And I'm going to click on Recolor. And I'm going to choose these options here. And I'm going to choose the very first one here. After that, I'm going to change its brightness a little bit here. Bring it down. About 20% or negative 20%. I'm going to increase the contrast just a little bit, about 20%. So now we've changed it and you notice now it looks kind of like an older image. And I think it'll go better with my theme. So now I want to insert some word art. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on insert and then down to word art. And I'm going to key in agenda. After keying in the word agenda, I'm going to hit the enter key once. And I'm going to change some elements within this word art. So first off I'm going to change its font to match my theme. I'm going to choose right here where it says Berkshire Swash. There we go. Now we have it in our Berkshire style. And the next thing I want to do is change its color. Click on Fill Color. And I'm going to choose Black. Now I'm going to change the border color, so I'll click there. And I'm going to choose this golden uh, dark yellow here. Now I'm going to resize it and position it where I want it to be. So 
So notice that when you have it in the middle of that image, you'll have that red line there. So I'm happy with that. So I'll let go of the mouse. Now in my presentation, I don't need the title here. So I'm going to click right on the border here and hit delete and take out that text box. Then what I'm going to do is click down here on this text box and I'm going to take my mouse and go right over here to the border and then I'm going to drag this up to increase its size. There we go. Now I don't need this text box either so I'm going to click on it and then hit the delete key. There we go. Now I have no text boxes. So I want to put in these shapes here so I'm going to click on shape and I need to find the nice rounded rectangle and there it is right there so I'm going to click it so now I'm going to drag it over here to create the exact size that I need and I let go once I have the right size right now it's gray inside but for the presentation I want a different color so I'm going to click on fill color and I'm going to choose this dark yellow 3 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change some elements for the fonts or the letters that go in here. So I'm going to change the text color. And I'm going to choose a really light yellow 3 there. And I'm going to go over here to the versus Arial. And I'm going to choose the uh, Berkshire Swash. And then for the uh, size I'm going to increase it a little bit there to let's go 18 and make it bold. And then we're going to click back into the box and type in the story. I'm going to click on the X for the format option so I have more space to work with. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the alignment here. So I'm going to click right here where it says align and then click on center. And it brings the story right in the center of this first button. Now there are a few ways to change this. Let's say if I wanted to make this larger, one way is just to highlight it and then you can go over here to the font size and if I you notice know, I click the plus here it makes it a little bit larger. Another way to change the font size is simply click on this border and then choose the new size and notice it does change the, the font size there for us. And I'm going to keep it at 22 here. Now if I'm happy with this, I'm going to take my mouse and go right to this little blue border and I'm going to right click right on that blue border and context menu will appear. And now I'm going to click on and select copy. And then right click below this button and select paste. So now I have two of these so I can drag it down here and then I can say paste again. I can drag that one as well. And what I can do is I can highlight all of these here by going over to the corner, dragging and then moving it down and now they all become highlighted. Now if I right click on the first one, say copy and then go down here and right click and say paste. Now I have three of them that move as one. And now it's really easy to create all of your buttons with just a few clicks. So now I have all six buttons. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up back to this corner, drag over all six buttons, and now I'm highlighting all of them. Now notice I can change all of their properties at once. So if I right click on one of them, and notice I can change their alignment here from horizontal. I can change their vertical alignment, and I can distribute them evenly there. So what I'm going to do is right here where it says distribute, I'm going to distribute them evenly uh, vertically. There you go. Now I have the exact same space in between each and every one of these buttons. Now I have a nice looking slide here with a good design. So now I can rename these. And I'll do that by clicking into them here. So the story is first and then I'm going to click behind the, the second one here. And I'm going to key in the characters. So now I've renamed all of these buttons here. And I have a really a good looking slide. Everything looks 
uh, well orderly there. So I'm going to insert a new slide by using the shortcut Control M. Okay, now that I have this new slide here, but I don't like the layout, so I'm going to click up here where it says Layout, and I'm going to change it to Title and Body. And I'm going to click up here into the title, and I'm going to choose Bookshire, and I'm going to type in The Story. Now I'm going to key in the uh, story here. So now I've typed in the story here. So now after typing in this part of the story here, I'm going to be adding images as well. I'm going to click on Insert, Image, Search the Web. And I'm going to click on the first image here. Click on Insert. And then I'm going to resize it here. So after putting in the uh, first image, I'm going to go in and insert a second image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to look for a Jack Tripper. There we go. I'm going to use this image now. I'm going to click on Insert. And I'll resize it. And really rearrange these. Be just like this. All right. Now once you have the images and the size and the position that you want, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this text box here. Let's take this image and I'm going to make it larger. So now once you have the images exactly the way that you want, and now we have two slides here and in the title slide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this story out a little bit so I have a second slide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this slide, copy it, and then right here right click below it and say paste. So I have the same slide twice. And I'm going to click on the second one here. And now I'm going to change things around a little bit. I don't need to say that why so I'm going to delete that text and delete that paragraph down here so now I'm going to resize this one here okay and really I don't need Jack Tripper here on this first slide we'll keep it like that and on the second one you'll look just like that so that looks good so I want to talk about this text here. Now that's a lot of text to uh, key in. So if you know the story, yes, you can just key it in like that. But if you want to, an easier way would be to find the information at a place such as Wikipedia and then highlight the text like this. Right click it and then copy it and then come back to the slide and then right click and then select paste and then that will paste all that text in and so that's what I did here saved me a lot of time now there's something else I would like to share with you too about these images there's a website called Unsplash so if I click there I can find more images at Unsplash and so here we'll just type in Three's Company and then hit enter and so you can find different images here if you're doing a different type of presentation. Now I'm not really finding any images that go along with Three's company, but that just say that one of these was one that I wanted to use. All you have to do is right click the image, say copy image, then go back to your presentation, right click there, and then select paste. And there it is. Then you can resize it and place it where you want it to go. And if you're not happy with it, you can click on it, hit the delete key once, and it goes away. Another website that offers images is Pixabay. Let's go into pixabay.com here. Let's look for Three's Company. And let's hit enter. Okay, again, I don't find uh, ABC's Three Company here. But again, if I wanted one of these, all I have to do is right click it and select copy image go back to my presentation right click in the presentation and select paste 
and <laughs> there we go. So it is easy to bring in images that way. And the images at Unsplash and Pixabay are really easy to use and you can use them in your presentations. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new slide. So I'm going to use a shortcut Control M. This time I'm going to change the layout to be title only. Right here. And I'm going to click up there and choose my font and this one's going to be called the characters. And I'm going to move this up a little bit. There we go. So what I'm going to do after positioning this title here and typing in the characters, I'm going to find an image out on the internet. So I'm going to click on new tab. And I'm going to key in three's company. And then I'm going to click on images. And I'm going to click on one here. And then I'm going to right click it. Say copy image. And go back to my presentation. And right click and paste. Now I'm going to move this image here towards the center. And you notice I have the red line to tell me it's in the center. And then I'm going to resize it. There we go. So I'm going to double click the image and crop off parts of the image here. Okay, and once I'm happy with that, I'll click outside of the image. Now I'm going to be inserting some text boxes to point out the characters. Now one way to do this is to click on insert and then go down to text box. But an easier way for me is to actually go ahead and click on the tool called text box. So I'm going to click it. Your mouse pointer will change to a cross. And I simply draw it out. From there I'm going to change the font style to be the Brookshire. And let's choose bold. I'm going to key in Jack Tripper. So now what I want to do is insert an arrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mouse and click over here on shape. And then notice we have all kinds of arrows to choose from. I'm going to choose this very first arrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the arrow where I want it to go. And let's position this a little bit better. Now once I have the text box for a jack tripper exactly the way I want it and my arrow where I want it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right on the border and right click right on the border and select copy. And then I'm going to right click down here and select paste. Now I can drag the extra one further down here. So now what I have is I have two text boxes that say the exact same thing. And I can position this one closer to Mrs. Roper. And I can copy this arrow down. So I'll copy this arrow, go down here, and I'll paste that arrow here. Try and make this look nicer here. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this arrow a little bit smaller. There we go. That way I can take Mrs. Roper's name and bring it a little bit closer. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this text box that says Mrs. Roper. And then I'm going to paste it and then move it. Let's move it over here. And then I can key in the new name there, Chrissy Snow. So now that I have Chrissy Snow here, I can click on her name there and then use the shortcut Control C to copy it. And then Control V as in Victor to paste it. Now we have one there for Janet and then I can go control V again and then this is for Stanley Roper. And then we're just going to click in here and then change our names. Here let's change her name a little bit here and I'll just go Helen. Roper and bring this out just a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, now we'll be ready for these arrows. So I'm going to click on one of the arrows, use the shortcut Control C, and then Control V to paste that arrow. I'll put it right there. Okay, now that we have our arrow here, we want to reposition it. So notice you have a circle up here. This is the free rotate tool, so just rotate it straight down. And then let's resize this a little bit. And move it in place. There we go, now it's pointing towards Chrissy Snow. Okay, I'm going to use the shortcut Control V to get another arrow. And Control V again, get another arrow. Now this one going straight up towards Stanley. Let's resize it here. There we go, so now we have Jack Tripper, Chrissy Snow, Janet Wood, Stanley Roper, and Helen Roper with all the arrows. So this is looking pretty good. Now what I want to do is actually group the text with the arrows and you can actually group these together. And this will allow us to form special animations. So to do this, I'm going to click on Jack here, Jack Tripper's name. Then hold down the shift key and then click on his arrow and then let go. Now they're both highlighted. We'll go up to Arrange and group and that ties these two together so any animation that I do for one will actually go to both of them at the same time. I'm going to group all of these now so again you just click on the text box hold the shift key down click on its arrow click on arrange and group. So I'm going to do that for all of these and the last one here for Stanley hold the shift key Click on the arrow and then arrange and group. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click back onto Jack Tripper's name here and I'm going to click on insert and animation. And I'm going to click right here where it says fade in. So I'm going to click on that button and I'm going to choose fly in from left. That way this will be a animation that actually will fly in from the left. So the next one here will be Chrissy Snow. We'll click on add animation and we'll say click on fade in and then fly in from top. That'll be good. So we'll click on Janet Wood here and then we'll click on add animation. And on this one we'll have fade in and we're going to choose fly in from the right. There we go. Looking good so far. Now I'm going to click on Stanley Roper's name. Click on Add Animation. And click on the button that says Fade In. And this will be Fly In from the bottom. And then Helen there will be last. Click on her name. Click on Add Animation. Click on Fade In. And this will be fly in from the left. Now, so here's your objects and their type of animation. So you notice we have fly in from the left on a click, fly in from the top, fly in from the right, fly in from the bottom, and fly in from the left. And all these are done whenever you click during your presentation. So now to check this, I'm going to click on play. It comes up, says the characters, we see them, but now when I click, here's Jack Tripper, Chrissy Snow, Janet Wood, Stanley Roper, and Helen Roper. Works beautifully. So we click on stop. So we're done with this slide here, so we go with the shortcut Control M. So I'm going to change the layout again. I'm going to click here on layout and choose title and body. So I'm going to click up here, change my font style to Brookshire, and then I'm going to call this one here TV Show. So now I'm ready to add the text down here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click in between these sentences, and I'm going to hit the enter key once there. And I'm going to highlight the text, and I'm going to put them into what's called a bulleted list. And as you can see, there's many options there for the bullet list. I'm going to just choose, uh, I think I'll choose the second one here. And I'm going to resize this text here to 
about half the size. I'm going to bring this up a little bit here. There we go. That looks better. Then we'll find an image to place in this large area. So I'm going to go back to the tab that has my images there on the internet. And I'll click on one here. And I'll right click it. Copy the image. And then go back to my slide. And right click and paste. I'm going to reposition this here. There you go. Once I'm happy with it, I'll leave it there. So let's add some nice animation here to this text. So I'll click it and I'll click on add animation right here. And I can say by paragraph. So if I click there and I click on play, it adds the first paragraph and then the second. So this is a very nice handy feature to use there. If you want to have your text do that, you click on by paragraph. Now we're ready to add the next slide. And we'll do Control M to insert the next slide. And what I'll do here is I'll change this here and I'll key in the episodes. Now what I'm going to do after keying in the text, I'm going to resize this here. So now after resizing this, I think I'm going to put in a video. So to do that, we're going to click on Insert, Video. So you can actually do a search. You click in there and then type in Threes Company. And then let's go Pilot and click on Search and see what we find. Okay, now let's say that I found one. What I'll do is I'll click it, click on select, and it puts it in for us. So it's that easy to insert some video. Now over here on the video playback, I can change this so it starts at a different time or it ends at a different time. So it's easy to make changes there to the numbers. You can even mute it if you need it to be muted. So I'm done with the episode slide, so I'm going to click in here and then use your shortcut Control M to insert a new slide. So I'm going to change the layout here. I'm going to click on Layout and I'm going to choose one column text. And this is the one that's called Student Review. So I'm going to change the font there and then key in Student Review. And this is where we're going to have our video for the Student Review. Of course you need to create that beforehand and then you would save it in your Google Drive. So now to insert the video in here from your Google Drive, once you've uploaded it there, click on insert and then click on video and then click on Google Drive. There you go and as soon as you find one go ahead and click it and then click on select. And now you can drop this where you need it to be. You can even resize it if you wanted to. And then for the subtitle, you can put in the uh, student's name. So it's that easy to add a video. Now let's say that you had not created a student review video. You could insert other videos by simply going to insert video. And let's go back out here. You can find a YouTube video. You can go by URL, so if you have a specific uh, web address where the video is located, you can actually key that in there. So there are many ways to find and insert videos. Okay, now as far as options for this video, if you click on it, you notice that you have what's called video playback, and these are format options. And you can actually mute the video if you needed to. You can start it at a specific time and end it as on apply change any of these parameters and if you needed to you can actually rotate it or even add other things let's see what a drop shadow is there you go and added a small drop shadow here okay now we're ready for a new slide so I'm going to go control M now I'm going to change my layout to big number here so I'm going to click it 
These are really impact slides. They're meant to show information in an easy to understand format. And you don't have to read out that information. The audience can see it, so it really saves time. I'm going to click in here and key in We Love It. I'm going to drag this to the top here. And we're going to add the poll here to this slide as well. So we're going to ask the question, Would you like to be Jack Tripper? So I'm going to resize this text box and then I'm going to move it up. And notice when I get those red lines there, it tells me it's in the center. All right, that looks good. We love it. Would you like to be Jack Tripper? So in this space right here, I'm going to be inserting a chart and that's from Google Sheets. And there's ways to create that. Now the good news is I've already created a chart in Google Sheets. And to put that in, all you got to do is click on Insert. And notice right here where it says chart, go across and down from sheets. And then let's find it there. There it is right here. Click on select and click on the specific chart that you want and then click on import. There we go. Now later if this data changes, it will show the newest data on this link here, which is great. So we now need to insert a new slide. Now the thing about this one though is I want it to be a copy of this agenda page here. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to right click on the agenda page and then go to copy. And I'm going to scroll down here and then right click below the very last slide and then select paste. There we go. Now I have a copy of the agenda page down here. So this is no longer my agenda page. This is now my question page. So I'm going to double click right here where it says agenda. And then I'm going to key in any questions. Question mark there. And then you hit the inner key once. And now we'll need to resize it here. There we go. Now if I wanted a different image in the background, I can actually click on the image. And notice right up here where it says replace image, I'm going to click that. I'm going to go down and click on search the web. And let's see here, let's go Three's Company. And I'm going to click on this one here. And click on the button that says replace. There we go. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to have these buttons actually link to the slides that are over here on the side. And it's actually easy to do. Just click on one here. And when you do click on one, you notice that you have this little chain that appears up here. And this is the insert link. Go ahead and click it. And then right here where it says slides in this presentation, click it. And since it's called the story, we're going to choose the story. So click on the story and then click on apply and we're going to do that for all of these so for the characters I'm going to click on insert link slides in this presentation and then we need to go down to the characters okay now we're going to click on the TV show click on insert link slides in this presentation Click on TV show and then apply. Make sure you are clicking right on that blue border. If not, the link will appear in the middle of your text. Let's click on insert link. Slides from presentation. And down to episodes. Student reviews. Click on insert link. Slides in this presentation. And click on student review apply and the last one here is the poll that one that we just inserted in let's go insert link slides in this presentation and there it is right here where it says we love it and apply. now that we have these buttons actually linking to these slides 
we need to create an invisible button that we can insert into the slide here that when we click it will take us right back to the questions. So what I'm going to do is click right here at the very top and go all the way to the story and we'll click on the text box then we're going to drag it over here and create a small box right in this corner now this box does need to stay transparent but you can always check that you just go to the fill color if it's not and it does need to be right here where it says transparent so I need this invisible button to link right down here to the question slide the last one there you have to click right on that border and then click on insert link go to slides in this presentation and go all the way down to slide number 10 click it click apply and there we go now when we click on this invisible uh, button here it will actually take us to the questions back to the questions page now what we need to do is copy this button into all of our slides and that can be done by simply going in and right clicking on that invisible button and then click on copy and we'll go down here to the next one here and paste puts it in click on the fifth slide let's choose uh, paste here there we go let's go to the sixth slide paste there we go puts it in seventh slide up in this corner just right click and select paste slide eight right click there and select paste on the we love it slide right click up there and select paste there you go so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the very end slide there with that goodbye animation so let's use the shortcut control M and we're going to change the layout here so I'm going to go click on layout and then we need to choose blank so to do this we're actually going to use several images so for this one I'm actually going to find an image on the internet for a threes company and let's choose this one here I like that one We'll right click it and then say copy image we'll go back to the presentation and then right click and paste we'll put this one here in the center and I'll center it there and what I'm going to do I'm going to resize it here make it a little bit larger so now I want them to be saying goodbye so I'm going to go over here and click on shapes and then select cutout and you notice there's a dialog cutout. I'm going to use that. I'm going to click on the rounded one there. And then I can drag it in. And on this one right here, you can actually move that around. So I'll make it look like a Jack here is speaking. Now I click inside. I'm going to change it to the uh, Bookshire font there. Click inside, and then I'm going to key in goodbye I'm going to highlight it and let's make this larger there we go and I can resize it a little bit here so now I need to make this look like he's actually saying it there and we're going to do that by inserting an animation here so I'm going to click on animate and we're going to keep the fade in here but this time it's going to be after previous and I'm going to slow it down a little bit here so let's play it and see how it looks like okay that looks good oh nice so here we see Jack Tripper and he's saying goodbye well, that is perfect now if the animation was too fast or too slow you can change it again to make it exactly the speed that you need it to be by simply moving this slider left or right so this is a very nice ending there for your presentation a couple things that we need to be aware of we need to now put in the slide transitions if you look up here where it says slide transition right now it's on none but if you click it you have different ones here 
and I'm going to choose cube and then I'm going to choose apply to all slides so now all the slides will have the same transition and that will be with the cube so it looks like we've made a really nice slide here and you'd click on the very first slide number one and then click on present there it is and that's beautiful that's nice I like that look at there next we have the story the story continued the characters and every time I click there they come in so that is working nice Okay, the TV show Now we have the episodes and we have this video here. I won't play it there for copyright reasons, but you know it works. Okay, next we have the student review and let's make sure that works. So my name's Charles Barry. Yep, it works. <laughs> okay. And so now we're going to click it again here. We love it, so that worked out very well. All right, now this is the questions and answers. So let's see if this works. So if I click on the TV show, it goes to the TV show. Wonderful. Now to get back to the questions, let's click on the invisible button that you know about, but the audience would not know about this button. You click it and it takes you right back to the questions. So let's check out the episodes here. Click on the invisible button. Click on student reviews. Okay, student poll. So everything is working perfectly. Wow, you have completed the professional presentation there. Um, if you've been following all those steps, and uh, really, I thank you for making it to this part of the video at the very end. This has been a very long video with many, many steps in there. In fact, to create this video, it took two days of clicking away and checking and getting all the video clips and everything else so yeah a lot of work has gone into this so that's why I really hope that you do click on thumbs up if you click on something else just let me know why and I'll try to improve it I've been teaching the computer classes uh, for Kings Canyon and Soma Unified School District since 2000 and uh, before that I was a computer technician so yeah, I do a lot of things with computers. I love Microsoft Office and I love Google, basically Google's Office. It doesn't really have an office per se. It has Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. And, and so basically the same applications, they just don't call it Office there in Google. And um, all these steps that we did here was within Google Slides. Now you could actually create the exact same thing using Microsoft's PowerPoint not a problem or well, again I want to say thank you there for making it to the very end of the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet I would ask you to consider subscribing to the channel as that really helps comment down below because I do read your comments and I try to reply or respond to those comments within a day or so alrighty well thank you again and bye bye